Hi everyone, it's Jennifer McKenzie, your district K-12 teacher librarian with this week's Read Aloud. And we are just continuing to uh, um, share passages from Dan Tricarico's Sanctuaries. So here he is, the Zen teacher. Hi, I'm Dan and I help teachers reclaim control. Who doesn't want a little bit of that in the middle of a pandemic? And um, yeah, we're focusing on this book, Sanctuary Self-Care Secrets for Stressed Out Teachers, because we have fabulous free access through our Gale databases. So here I am going to the library webpage, clicking on Gale, just trying to remind you how to log in and utilize our, our online eBooks. You're gonna click on PD eBooks, and then you will get to, if you're asked for a password, it's Sayusla, all lowercase. And so I put, uh, created a little collection of staff self-care books. Here is Sanctuaries. You can click it open to view it. I'm gonna expand full page. We covered the chapter on Sanctuaries last week and it was asking you like, where are some of your Sanctuaries? I said my home, nature and art are Sanctuaries for me. All right, so this week's chapter, Intentional and Radical Self-Care. Sit back, relax, enjoy. The world can be a big and scary place. Stress is inevitable. The way we navigate that stress determines the difference between thriving and burning out. I think a lot of us are figuring that out right now. In a profession that has historically ignored the need for self-care, we must find ways to cope with the tension and anxiety and deal with the stressors inherent in our work. Because ultimately the responsibility for taking care of ourselves lies within our own hands. If we don't make that choice, and it is a choice, to take care of ourselves and value our peace of mind and expansiveness of spirit, then it most likely won't happen. Sure, we might experience random and serendipitous moments of relaxation and respite, but stress and workloads often expand when left unchecked. Unfortunately, self-care, though necessary and beneficial, is not something our society rewards. In fact, it often rewards just the opposite. In a world where its inhabitants are addicted to smartphones, laptops, and Netflix accounts, we're responsible for breaking the cycle and stopping to value and honor those times when we recognize our own deep impulses to slow down, breathe, and maybe even meditate. It may seem unorthodox and unconventional to stop the busyness, especially given what our neighbors and colleagues are doing, but making the choice to pause can be critical, even life-saving, especially when those impulses are buried and suffocated by relentless stress. Honoring and valuing those impulse, impulses is something I call intentional and radical self-care. Let me break it down for you. Intentional self-care is not gonna happen by accident. The word intentional then means by choice or purpose. In other words, no one is going to hand it to you or do it for you. You may have an incredible support system of friends, of loved ones, and if you do, fantastic. But chances are no one in your life is likely going to walk up to you, look you in the eye and say, you know what, you look pretty worn out. Why don't you take a nap? Whether you call it self-love, self-care, or self-compassion, these things don't typically happen as a matter of spontaneity and serendipity. They are skills muscles. And like all muscles, all skills, they only get stronger and better when exercised and practiced. Self-care is not a choice. Self-care is a choice, your choice. It takes purposeful intention to make it happen. One thing you can do is increase your odds. One thing you can do to increase your odds of a little personal TLC is to schedule it on your Google Calendar. Sounds crazy. Writing something down makes it more real and gives it a little more gravitas than, it, than if it remains as a someday, sometime idea in your mind. Radical means different from what is typical or ordinary. In this Zen teacher's mind, then, radical means unusual, not like we always do it. If you want to break the frenetic autopilot pace you slip into and learn to improve your self-care, you have to do things differently and you have, than, have you, than you have been doing. This is not only a great challenge for us, but also for those around us. I heard, first heard the expression radical self-care used by the writer Anne Lamott. 
She recognized that self-care often broke with some kind of traditional norm. This means that if you insist on time for renewal and rejuvenation, for example, you may face resistance from those around you who are, used, who are not used to your behavior or used to you behaving in a certain way. They may experience what is called role stress, which is what happens when the role they are accustomed to you playing in their lives changes, and they find themselves feeling uncomfortable or even threatened by the new you. When that happens, your best recourse is to accept what is and proceed with non-judgment. Intentional and radical self-care calls you to set boundaries and value and respect your personal needs and desires, even if it pushes you or somewhere, someone else out of a familiar comfort zone. Lamont tells us that radical self-care is what we've been longing for, desperate for our entire lives friendship with our own hearts. Isn't the idea of having a friendship with our own hearts a lovely thought? If we cannot commune with ourselves first, then it's just not clear to me how we can best serve or be present with others. I remember one day years ago, I was cleaning the house with my family. After I finished some domestic tasks that made our domicile a little more inhabitable, I made my way downstairs and announced that I was going to take a break. After this proclamation, I stretched out on the couch in the living room. Upstairs, I could hear a slight increase in the noise of the task being accomplished. Things were being done a little more vigorously. Drawers were being shut a little more aggressively. And as my family members wandered by, uh, wandered by me on the couch, I could sense the heat of their gaze on me. I imagined they were thinking, why do you get to take a break when we're all still working our butts off? And while part of me was hoping, I suppose, to model what it is like to take care of myself in the hopes that my typical type A family members would realize that a little balance is helpful is a helpful, helpful perspective, I was smart enough to know I shouldn't actually say, you can take a break anytime you want. I mean, I didn't have a death wish. In years past, when I tried to match my family's rhythm of constant forward motion with no breaks, no rest, no Sabbath of any kind, I not only felt unhappy, but I would often watch them push themselves to the nth degree and end up sick or worn out or grouchy simply because they hadn't honored the impulses they were experiencing that encouraged them to take care of themselves. When I talk about intentional and radical self-care, keep these two points in mind. One, if you wanna treat yourself better and thereby be in a better position to love, to give, and to serve others, you must do it on purpose and by choice. And two, when you do so, your actions will seem atypical and out of the ordinary, most likely. Taking action with purpose and by choice, especially when that action is not considered typical by others, can be a subversive, subversive rebellious act. So I guarantee you'll ruffle some feathers, and I promise you'll get funny looks. And so what? Be a rebel. Value your own needs. Take care of yourself. What's the worst could, that could happen? Inner peace. Okay. I love that chapter. As I was reading, um, it reminded me of three things. And um, first and foremost, I was an Army Medical Service Corps officer for many years. And any healthcare provider will tell you that when people are laying on their deathbed, no one ever says, I wish I had worked more. I wish I had worked harder. Okay, no one ever says that when they're laying on their deathbeds. So we do have this, uh, we live in a culture that values being busy. And it's, it doesn't always serve us very well. And then um, Dan is talking about being intentional with your self-care. Seriously, people, put something on your Google Calendar or calendarize it however you need to, to commit to it. And even while you're establishing your practice of self-care and you you forget to commit to it or you have it on your calendar and you don't quite get to it, at least it is a weekly or daily reminder that you're supposed to be at least thinking about getting to the point where you do it. Okay, so Google, calendarize your self-care. 
Um, and I'll just for example, I do at least five minutes of a gratitude journal in the morning that I consider to be my self care, five minutes in the evening, and I try to find some point in the day to do a little art. That's how I try to fit it in. And then the second thing he mentions is yeah, it's radical. Okay, again, we live in the culture that um, does not really necessarily value self care, even though it is proven to make us healthier human beings. It's unhealthy to not have self-care practices. You might get some funny looks. So in my spare time when I'm not here at school, I art journal. And um, you know, I'll, I'll art journal for hours on the weekend. And when I first started doing that, um, I actually first started art journaling when I was stationed at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, DC, because I needed to um, practice my own self-care so I could serve our, our wounded soldiers. That's where I learned to set boundaries and practice self-care. Again, it's you got to put on that own, your own oxygen mask first before you're even able to help others. And yeah, it was, it was a wild thought. People are like, oh, it must be nice to take a couple hours to do some art. Um, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is really nice. And you too can find some time to do whatever it is you need to, to take care of yourself. So um, you may even wrestle with yourself and um, it might be challenging. You might be battling with yourself at first when you're trying to initiate um, self-care practices. So, all right, so there you go. We will see you next, next week with another chapter from Sanctuaries. Self-care strategies for stressed out teachers. Bye.